Hello everyone. Welcome to Sudhi's Pharma World. Today I am going to talk about Bernoulli's theorem. Bernoulli's theorem is an equation which results when law of conservation of energy is applied to the flow of fluids. You know what is this law of conservation of energy? The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of an isolated system remains constant. That means there is no gain or loss of energy in that system. So Bernoulli's theorem is an equation which results when law of conservation of energy is applied to the flow of fluids. Bernoulli's theorem states that in a steady state, ideal flow of an incompressible fluid, the total energy per unit mass, which consists of pressure energy, kinetic energy and atom energy at any point of the fluid is constant. So here comes the definition of Bernoulli's theorem. You should study the statement like this. Bernoulli's theorem states that ideal flow of an incompressible fluid. What is this incompressible fluid? Incompressible fluid means we cannot change uh, the density of a certain kind of liquid. That liquid is known as incompressible liquid or incompressible fluid. According to Bernoulli's theorem, the ideal flow of an incompressible fluid, the total energy per unit mass is constant at any point of the fluid. That is what Bernoulli's theorem states. The total energy includes pressure energy, kinetic energy and atom energy. So the total energy per unit mass is constant at any point of the fluid. That is what Bernoulli's theorem states. I repeat the definition of Bernoulli's theorem. Bernoulli's theorem states that in a steady state, ideal flow of an incompressible fluid, the total energy per unit mass, which consists of pressure energy, kinetic energy and atom energy at any point of the fluid is constant. So conveying liquid from one region to another region, from one point to another point, we need a pump. So this pump add some amount of energy during the conveying process. Here consider this pump working under isothermal condition between these two points A and B. Uh, now let's study the Bernoulli's theorem in detail. Here you can see a pipeline uh, that is connected to a pump. For transporting or conveying a liquid from uh, the point A to point B, we need a pump. During the conveying process, the pump add some amount of energy to the system. Okay, pump generally supply energy for conveying liquid from the point A to the point B. You consider this pump that is working under isothermal conditions between the point A and B. At this point A, one kilogram of liquid is assumed to be entering into the pipeline. Okay, you should consider this point A. At this point, the liquid that experiences three kind of energy. What are they? Pressure energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay, you should consider this point. At this point, one kilogram of liquid is assumed to be entering into the pipeline. Okay, at this point A, our liquid experiences pressure energy, kinetic energy and potential energy. This liquid is flowing through this pipeline at a certain pressure. So, the body experiences pressure energy. We can write it as Pa divided by G rho A. The pressure energy at this point A we can express that like this. Pa divided by G rho A. What is this Pa? Pa is the pressure energy at this point A. G, G is the acceleration due to gravity and rho A is the density of the liquid at this point A. So pressure energy, we can express that as like this. Pa divided by G rho A. Pa is the pressure at a point A. 
G is the acceleration due to gravity. Rho A is the density of the liquid. Now let's see the definition of potential energy and how we can express this potential energy. Potential energy is defined as the energy possessed by the body by virtue of its position. Here you can see our reference line and the point A is about at a height of x a meter from the reference line and the point b is about x b height above our datum plane or above our reference line okay by virtue of its position the body experience or the body possesses uh, some energy that is known as potential energy so uh, this point a is considered at a height of x a meter above the reference plane so the potential energy for 1 kg of our liquid can be expressed as x a let's move on to the kinetic energy kinetic energy is defined as the energy possessed by the body by virtue of its motion since the liquid is under motion the velocity of liquid may be designated as u a meter per second at a point a the velocity of liquid at that point a is expressed as u a meter per second so the kinetic energy we can express like this u a square divided by 2g kinetic energy is possessed by the body uh, by virtue of its motion and we can express that u a square divided by 2g so total energy is equal to pressure energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy okay now let's see uh, the total energy at the point a total energy at the point a that is equal to pressure energy pressure energy the equation for pressure energy is pa divided by g rho a and kinetic energy we can express kinetic energy like this u a square divided by 2g that is substituted in this equation and potential energy potential energy or atom energy we express like x a so the total energy at a point a is like this pa divided by g rho a plus u a square divided by 2g plus x a this is total energy at that point a according to bernoulli's theorem the total energy at a point a is constant so we can write this equation and then it is equal to constant pa divided by g rho a plus u a square divided by 2g plus x a that is equal to constant okay like this we can write pa divided by g rho a plus u a square divided by 2g plus x a equal to constant are you following after the system reaches the steady state whenever 1 kg of liquid enters at a point a another kg of liquid leaves at point b listen whenever 1 kg of liquid at a point a enters whenever 1 kg of liquid enters that point that starting point that is known as a at that time another 1 kg of liquid leaves that point b that is our discharge point b therefore the energy content of 1 kg of liquid that is being displaced at that point b we can write it as total energy at a point b that is equal to pb divided by g rho b plus ub square divided by 2g plus xb that is equal to c okay whenever 1 kg of liquid enters the point a at the same time another 1 kg of liquid leaves that point b that is our discharge point therefore energy content of 1 kg of liquid that is being displaced at point b we can write it as like this xb is the height from the datum to the pipe xb is the height 
from the reference plane to the point B, U B is the velocity at a point B, and P B is the pressure at the point B. Rho B is the density of the fluid at that point B. So, as I already said about a law of conservation of energy, uh, now you are familiar with the law of conservation of energy. A law of conservation of energy means uh, in an isolated system, the total energy will be constant. Uh, so input equal to output. Okay, there is no gain or loss of energy. Now you are familiar with the law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation means in an isolated system, total energy uh, remains constant. That means input is equal to output. If there is no gain or loss of energy. the principles of conservation of energy may be applied to the two points a and b then we can write it as input equal to output because there is no gain or loss of energy so we can write it as input equal to output that means input means the total energy at a point a and output means the total energy at that point b the principles of energy of conservation is applied to the flow of fluid then input equal to output that means total energy at a point a that is equal to total energy at a point b what is this total energy at a point a p a divided by g rho a plus U A square divided by two G plus X A. This is total energy at a point B, and this is total energy at a point B. Now this equation is familiar to us because we have already studied this in earlier slides. During the transportation of fluid from the point A to point B, the pump added some amount of energy to the system. So we can express that. Plus W joule during the transportation of the liquid, uh, due to the frictional forces, uh, some amount of energy will be lost, and uh, that energy loss can be expressed as F joule. Two. We should consider these two points too. Uh, so the energy balance between points A and B can be written as. So we should consider these two points uh, in our equation to balance uh, the energy between the two points A and B. So we can write the equation P A divided by G rho A plus X A plus U A square divided by two G minus F F is the frictional force, energy loss due to frictional force, and plus W W is the energy added by the pump. You should add these two points uh, to balance the energy between uh, the point A and B. Okay, that is equal to P B divided by G rho B plus X B plus U B square divided by two G. So this is our equation. So this is our Bernoulli's equation. So this is our equation for Bernoulli's theorem. Here, the principles of energy of conservation are applied to the flow of fluids. Then we get this equation. This is known as Bernoulli's equation. Now, move on to the applications of Bernoulli's theorem. Bernoulli's theorem is applied in the measurement of rate of flow of fluids using orifice meter, venturi meter, etc. it can also applied uh, in the working of centrifugal pumps in centrifugal pump the kinetic energy is converted into pressure head which helps in pumping the liquid so we can apply the principles of bernoulli's theorem in the case of centrifugal pump it is easy to measure heights and apply them as energy terms which is also a contribution of bernoulli's theorem so these are the important applications of bernoulli's theorem hope you understand So these are the important points regarding Bernoulli's theorem. Hope you understand. Thank you. See you next video.